สวัสดีครับผมชื่อซันจีโคราโปเก้ is now live and with that we have the full roster of newly added monsters for this update Coral Poke will stick around for two weeks with terrible spawn rates in forest and swamp, and boosted spawn rates on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It is weak to ice and poison, and the breakable parts are the same as Poke Poke. The monster attacks by unleashing a barrage of water attacks from long range. Remaining at a distance will leave you vulnerable to its most dangerous attacks, so it would be prudent to move in to close quarters. Looking at you, Black Diablo bow users. Shame on you. By breaking its head, some of its water attacks may be considerably weakened. If you were to chop off its tail, Coral Poke may not use some of its tail jet attacks. While I'm not going to share all its move sets, let's talk about his AOE attacks. Coral Poke has some BS AOE attacks, just like in Monster Hunter World. So please feel free to rage in the comments if you want to vent it out. There's this attack where Coral Poke throws three water balloons in the air, and that will hit your left and your right, and also the spot you are standing on. So you're dead no matter which way you go, other than forward and backwards. Remember Poke's standing tongue attack? Coral Poke has its own version. Instead of using its tongue, it shoots three water balloons to the right and the left. If you miss Poke's chicken run tongue attack, don't worry, you'll still see it here. Remember Poke's tail sweep attack? Cora is like, Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. It sweeps in the usual clockwise direction, but take note, it could also go in anti clockwise direction. Cora Poke also has this car washing move where it uses its tail as a jet spray. Is your rage meter increasing? I am editing this video right now and I'm already angry. This is now an angry Sean show. It also has this P split attack. 97.7% of you guys should know what I mean. It fires a water beam from its mouth and the water beam splits to the side. Better practice your perfect evades, my friends. If that's not rage inducing enough, another one of its move is to shoot a beam from its butt with such force that it flies up in the air and then it goes around in a circle much like if you were to hold a garden hose 50 cm away from the tip and it is not like you could swipe backwards till you hit the edge of the arena no 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 this attack ends with a 360 degrees wide sweep you either have to find an opening to go into the circle or be really really good with perfect evade that should be all the BS moves, I hope. Now, for some less rage inducing content, stats wise, it is at the same tier as Zinoga and Rattalos, so it's actually pretty good. You can make all weapons from Coral Puke except Longsword, Dual Blades, and Charge Blade. Unlike Devil Joe, there isn't different skills for different weapons, and this monster is just like the rest. You get Earplugs level 1 at grade 8. Coral Poke's light bow gun comes with water ammo, water pierce ammo, and sticky ammo. As for bow, it comes with rapid level 2, level 3, pierce level 3, and pierce level 4. This new monster also introduces a new skill to Monster Hunter now called Power Prolonger. It extends the power up state of dual blades, longsword, and charge blade. I have yet to test it, but I would guess that the power up state means dual blades in demon mode, long sword when the spirit gauge is red, charge blade with red shield. Now, the exciting part. Let's take a quick look at the armor pieces that it provides. Helmet comes with weakness exploit, one out of the box. At grade 6, you get lock on, and at grade 8, you get another level of weakness exploit. Yes, you heard that right. This is the first armor piece that has an additional skill at grade 8. The helmet is an upgrade from Kulu's helmet, and I'm definitely going to make this a priority. Chest piece comes with power prolonger once you forge it, another level of power prolonger at grade 6, and a level of rising tide at grade 8. Gloves comes with rising tide 1 and skyward striker. 
Koi comes with Recoil Level 1 and Reload Level 1. LBG mains. This should be your top, topper, topperous priority. I'll talk about updated sets later on and you'll see why. If you don't forge this, I'll tell your mom and her mom about your browsing history. Boots comes with Power Prolonger and Weakness Exploit 1. Now, let's talk about updated builds. For Sword and Shield, Long Sword, Hammer, Charge Blade, and Dual Blades, you can go with Coral Poke Helm, Azure Rattalos Chest, Engine of Gloves, Rattalos Coy, and Azure Rattalos Boots. This gives you Fire Attack 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Ear Plugs 2, that can go up to 3 if you use Rattalos Weapon and lock on. For Charge Blade, I think it's not worth sacrificing skills for quick work or power prolonger at this juncture. However, if you would like to include that in your build, please feel free to do so. Also, while Weakness Exploit does nothing for foul attacks, the Sword attacks and Axe attacks can still crit, and that is something to consider too. For Great Sword, you can go with the current Fire 5 Focus 4 build. Engine of Helm and Gloves, Pink Radiant or Poké Chest, Rattalos Koi and Jurotodos Boots. If you think Focus 4 is too much, simply swap out Pink Radiant or Poké Chest for Rattalos Chest. For Lens, there are two builds with Lock On and Guard 1. Both are viable depends on how strong your weapon is. If your weapon's total attack value is below 2400, Go with this build. Engine of Helm, Azure Rattalos Chest, Engine of Gloves, Black Diablos Koi, and Radoban Boots. This gives you Fire Attack 5, Ear Plugs 2, which also can go up to 3 if you use Rattalos Weapon, Lock On, and Guard 1. If your weapon's attack value is above 2400, go with this build instead. Oh, explain why the breakoff point is at 2400. Okay, so this is deciding between the last level of fire and two levels of weakness exploit. The last level of fire gives you 150 attack stats. In order for weakness exploit 2 to break even, or even be better than 150 attack stats, we can calculate backwards. 150 divided by 0.25, which is the critical damage, divided by 0.25. This is the chance to crit from weakness exploit 2. This gives you 2,400. With Fire Attack 4, that is equivalent to Grade 9.4 Rattalos Weapon. For Bow, there is no change. We can stick with the same Focus 5 Fire Attack 4 build. Oh, what a time it is to be alive for you like Bogan means. We can now get Fire Attack 5 with Recoil and Reload Level 3. The usual Engine of Helm and Glove, with Azor Rattalos Boots for Fire Attack 5. Azor Rattalos Boots, Paolumu Chest and Coral Poke Koi for Recoil 3 and Reload 3. I don't even use Light Bow Gun, but I shed a manly tear when I saw this. For General Water Melee build, we can go with Coral Helm, Jura Chest and Gloves, Pink Raten Koi and Jagras Boots. This gives you Water Attack 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Crit Eye 2 and Lock On. For Great Sword, we can use Coral Helm, Jura Chest and Gloves, Rattalos Koi and Jagras Boots. This gives us only one level of focus though, but we get full water level 5 with Lock On and Weakness Exploit. For Lens, we can use the General Water Melee build, swap out the Pink Raten Koi for Baroth Koi for Guard 1. For Light Bow Gun, you can go with Toby Helm, Palumu Chest, Jura Gloves, Coral Poke Koi, and Jagras Boots. This gives you Water 4, Recoil 3, and Reload 2. If having both Recoil and Reload at level 3 is mandatory, swap out Toby Helm for Coral and Jagras Boots for Azor Rattalos. You would have to lower Water Attack by 2 levels, but you gain 2 levels of Weakness Exploit. So I guess this is the best you can go for Water Light Bow Gun. For Bow, no changes to the current Focus 5 Water 3 build. Same as before, if you want to, you can adjust your Focus Level and Water Attack Level according to your preference. 
There's Focus 5, Water Attack 3. Focus 4, Water Attack 4. Focus 3, Water Attack 5. For General Thunder melee build, we can go with Coral Helm, Toby Chest and Koi, Zinoga Gloves and Kuluyaku Boots. This gives you Thunder Attack 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Crit Eye 2 and Lock On. For Great Sword, we can go with Coral Helm, Toby Chest and Koi, Zinoga Gloves and Juratodos Boots. This gives you Thunder Attack 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Focus 2 and Lock On. For Lens, simply go with the General Thunder melee build, swap out the boots to Radoban. For Thunder Light Bowgun, we can go with Tsutsuyaku's Helm, Palumo's Chest, Zinoga Gloves, Coral Poke's Koi, and Azorathalos Boots. This will give you Thunder Attack 4, Recoil and Reload level 3. For Thunder Bow, no change from before, we can stick with Azor Helm, Poke Chest, Zinoga Gloves, Toby Koi and Juratodos Boots. This gives you Focus 5, Thunder Attack 4. You can also swap out Poke Chest for Toby if you prefer Thunder Attack 5, Focus Level 4. For Ice General Melee build, we can go with Coral Helm, Barrier of Chest and Gloves, Logiana Koi and Kuluyaku Boots. This gives you Ice Attack 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Crit Eye 2 and Lock On. For Great Sword, we can go with Coral Poke's Helm, Barrier of Chest and Gloves, Logiana Koi and Juratodos Boots. This gives us Ice Attack 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Focus 2 and Lock On. For Lens, simply swap out the boots to Radoban. For Ice Light Bowgun, sadly we can only get Ice Attack 4, Recoil Level 3 and Reload Level 2 with this build. Banbaro Helm, Palumu Chest, Barrier of Gloves, Lurgana Koi and Azorathalos Boots. Alternatively, we can swap out Banbaro Helm for Lurgana Helm, Lurgana Koi for Coral Poke Koi. This gives you Ice Attack 3, Recoil and Reload 3. Lastly, we have Ice Bow. No change in current meta, we can go with Azorathalos Helm, Pink Radiant or Poke Chest, Barrier of Gloves, Lurgana Koi and Juratodos Boots. This gives you Focus 5, Ice Attack 4. Alternatively, you can lower our focus by 1 and increase Ice to 5 by swapping out the chest piece for Barrier of. For Dragon General Melee build, we can go with Coral Helm, Pink Radiant Chest and Boots, Devil Joe Gloves and Koi. This gives us Dragon Attack 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Pick Performance 2, Special Boost 2, and Lock On. For Dual Blades, simply swap out the Helm for Devil Joe and Gloves for Raiden. This gives you Dragon Attack 5, Burst 4, Special Boost 2, and Lock On. For Longsword, if you can play without Lock On, you can go with Odogaron Helm, Pink Raiden Chest and Boots, Devil Joe Gloves and Koi. This gives you Dragon Attack 5, Quick Work 5, Pick Performance 2, and Special Boost 2. If you are like me who just prefers the quality of life over damage, then just swap out Devil Joe Gloves for Raiden for Lock On. For Light Bowgun, we can go with Devil Joe Helm and Gloves, Paolumu Chest, Coral Poke's Koi, and Azor Boots. This gives you Recoil 3, Reload 3, Rising Tide 2, Slugger 2, Dragon Attack 2, and Pick Performance 2. Bow is pretty sick. You can go with Azor Rattalos Helm, Pink Radiant Chest, Devil Joe Gloves and Koi, and Juratodos Boots. This gives you Focus 5, Dragon 4, and Pick Performance 4. With Latent Power introduced in this update, you can utilize it for our raw builds. Latent Power increases Affinity and Special Gauge Fuel Rate after 48 seconds and the time lowers down 1 seconds for every 100 motion value hits. 
I don't have the information on motion value for Monster Hunter now, but to simply explain it, motion value is based on how hard your weapon hits. It is a multiplier in the grand scheme of damage calculation to take into account how the attack speed of weapon works. To ensure that weapons are balanced, heavier and slower weapons would have higher motion value over quick and light weapons. I didn't include latent power in the elemental builds because there's just no space to squeeze it in. For hammer, we can go with Coral Poké Helm, Devil Joe Chest, Azure Rattalos Gloves, Pink Radiant Koi, and Kuluyaku Boots. This build gives you Crit Eye 4, Weakness Exploit 2, Latent Power 2, Crit Boost 2, and Lock On. For Long Sword, I don't think any of its move is above 100 motion value, except maybe EI Slash. I can't confirm though. Anyway, I've decided not to include latent power into the build. We can stick with the current meta build. Kulu Helm and Boots, Rattalos Chest, Elzo Rattalos Gloves, and Pink Raten Koi. This gives Crit Eye 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Crit Boost 2, and Lock On. You can add quick work in, but that lowers your damage. If you want to, you can go with Odogaron Helm and Gloves, Rattalos Chest, Black Diablos Koi, and Kulu Yaku Boots. If you don't use Lock On, simply swap in Pink Ratian Koi. For both Sword and Shield and Dual Blades, the current Burst 5 Weakness Exploit 2 meta is still the strongest. For Great Sword, you can go with Black Diablo's armor pieces with Juratoda's boots. That will give you Resentment level 4, Focus level 3, Part Breaker level 2 with Lock On. To use this build well, make sure to use your shoulder tackle through attacks so as to activate Resentment for 15 seconds. For Charge Blade, we can go with Coral Helm, Bar of Chest, Banbaro Gloves, Diablo's Koi, and Kuluyaku Boots. This gives you Offensive Guard 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Crit Eye 2, and Lock On. For Lands, we can follow Charge Blade build and swap out Boots for Radoban. This gives you Offensive Guard 5, Weakness Exploit 2, Guard, and Lock On. These two builds revolves around Offensive Guard. Offensive Guard triggers every time you do a perfect guard or a perfect counter thrust. This buffs your raw attack by 40% for 10 seconds. It's pretty good, but you have to get used to Offensive Guard. Alternatively for lands, if you prefer not to use guard, you can go with this build. Coral Helm, Odogaron Chest, Azor Rattalos Gloves, Barov Koi, and Kuluyaku Boots. This gives you Crit Eye 4, Weakness Exploit 2, Crit Boost 2, Lock On, and Guard. The way to play this is really to be aggressive and poke the monster, while still having the option of guarding if you're unable to dodge. For Light Bowgun, assuming you're using Odogaron's Light Bowgun, we can go with Zinoga Helm and Boots, Paolumu Chest, Raten Gloves, and Coral Poke Koi. This gives you Burst Level 4, Recoil level 3 and Reload level 1. If you are wondering why Reload level 1, it is because Autogaron has imbued 2 levels of Reload. If you are new here and uh, didn't watch my previous video on Autogaron, I'll link it in the description box below. So maybe just take a look there, yeah? Currently, on average, you would apply status build up on every 1 in 3 hits. With status sneak attack, if you were to attack from the back of the monster, you would be able to apply status build up more frequently. If I'm not wrong, you don't have to be exactly at the back of the monster. All you have to be is around 4 to 8 o'clock position and you should be fine. For poison melee, if you want to focus your status attacks, you can give this a try. Coral Helm, Raten Chest, Tsutsuyaku Gloves, Poke Koi, and Kuluyaku Boots. This gives you Poison Attack 4, Weakness Exploit 2, Status Sneak Attack 2, Crit Eye 2, and Lock On. 
for para melee just like before if you want to focus on status attack you can use this build coral helm zuzu yaku chest and gloves pink radiance koi and juros boots these two should work better in multiplayer since the monster could be attacking other players you can then lock on to the tail or the hind legs all right that's all folks okay this video is all ish you need to know about coral poke poke i hope you have enjoyed this long video please let me know what you will prioritize to build for coral poke in the comment section below bye